let's talk a little bit about what pharmacy students can do to get into informatics, how they can learn about informatics. Yeah, that's a great topic. Uh, yeah, this, this feels a little uncomfortable, what do you think? Let's, yeah, just a little let's, bit. Let's go over to the couch. So we're back over here on the couch, this nice comfy couch. Uh, continue the conversation. Um, so, what pharmacy students can do, and you were saying? Yeah, uh, so it, it's always a challenge, and depending on where you are, you, you'll notice sometimes on the, if you're on the East Coast, where a lot of things are going on with technology, you'll find it might be a little bit easier to see that in your curriculum, but for myself, I went to pharmacy school in the fell, we're just not there yet. Uh, one of the greatest tools that I ran across, especially when I was a resident, was uh, Partner to Me, and that's um, from HIMSS. And pretty much it's a series of uh, presentations and they have audios as well, just going through the core elements of informatics. So we're talking CPOE, we're talking technology, we're talking there's different tips to be able to really succeed in informatics. So I would say um, to someone, you know, talk to your administrator, talk to your teacher, maybe your management teacher and say, can you incorporate some of these lectures into our curriculum? I think it's worth a shot. Yeah. You know, this is a very interesting topic in general. Um, you speak about partners in need. When did you say you learned about it? As a resident. As a PGY2 resident? PGY2. Yeah, and I, I think that was pretty similar for me as well. I first heard about it when I was actually interviewing for jobs. So this is after PGY2. Wow. So I was interviewing for jobs and it was actually my interviewer who I was interviewing for a faculty position. Mm -hmm. And they were telling me about partners in need. And I was like, what is this thing? I, it, it's it would be nice if, you know, pharmacy informatics was more integrated into our curriculums. What's very interesting though, I think, is this past HHP, did you go to SHP last year? I missed that actually. So, yeah. So, it was in Vegas, you know. <laughs> that was a good time. I wish. Good time. I wish. <laughs> um, good time. We went to a lot of networking sessions. This week. I didn't drink anything though. No, no coffee. Yeah. A lot of coffee, a lot of water. But anyway, so at ASHP, they actually had a really cool networking session. You know? um, and one of the conversations was actually about bringing more exposure to informatics to pharmacy students. Um, and a lot of individuals on the t around the table were talking about, you know, when is the best place to do this? Because, and it's, it's a great point, we keep talking about introducing informatics to pharmacy students. Right. The problem is, People who go to pharmacy school, I think, usually think this area is kind of boring. Like, right? This isn't it boring? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like technical. You don't go to a pharmacy right. school and learn about computers or technology or stuff like that. So, with that being said, I'll ask you one of the questions, uh, and I'll let you know what the group kind of said. But what? When do you think would be the best time to talk to pharmacy students about? Informatics. So in those four years of pharmacy school, when is the best time to introduce them to this field that we're trying to get everyone exposed to? Right. I mean, I would say as early as your first year in pharmacy school, if not even pre-pharmacy, because there's so many different opportunities in informatics, and every day I'm learning about something different that I could be able to be doing. Where I'm at right now, we have pharmacists that are working in IE and informatics, pharmacists that are working in critical care informatics, pharmacists that are working in ambulatory informatics. And those are the things that we don't really hear. You know, most of us are, have retail shoved down our throats, we have, you know, hospital, and that's pretty much it. That's most what people think about. And so I think the earlier you know about it, the better chance you have to be able to know which path you would like to go into so you'd be able to, you know, just be happy in what you're doing. Yeah, I have to agree that the earlier you get exposed to informatics, the better, especially giving students the opportunity that you know they can kind of navigate what area they're interested in. Very early in the career they're right. so they can start doing that. Um, and in some ways, to play the devil's advocate, I'm torn because I was thinking about something unrelated but similar about when I was introduced to different areas of pharmacy when I was the first year. Um, so for example, which is kind of ironic because it was global health. Global Health. I remember when I was a first year student, they told me about Global Health. And I did not pay attention to the course. I did never attended lecture. It, I, it was horrible. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about Global Health. Right. It was boring. Right. Um, what's that? And I say ironic because I'm now going to be pursuing a master's in public health. And this is what I actually do care about. 
So it's kind of funny. But but to go back to the point is, you know, they introduced that course so early in our careers, I just kind of zoned it out. So I feel like part of it is it's difficult to I'm just playing devil's advocate. Right. I think it's important to introduce it early. But if you do introduce it early, will the student even pay attention to it? You know, and then going back to even more of the technical terms, like I bet you a lot of our pharmacy students don't even know about this. It's like CPOE. Like, do they even know what CPOE is? Right. Do they know what barcode medication administration is? Do they know what spark pumps is? So you you try to introduce them to this concept of all these technologies, but because you don't know what it is or you don't care about it, you're just gonna zone it out. Right. So it, it's really it's a I mean it's a great point that you made. It kind of reminds me there was a. In Texas, there was a pharmacy school. They actually had all of their pharmacy students take law as a first year. And Ooh, it's, it's, it's horrible. if you think about it, you know most schools they'll have their students take it as a third year, right before mm -hmm. they're going into their rotations. Well, the school's idea was that um, as students, they're going to be in the retail setting, they're going to be in the hospital setting, and they wanted them to be able to apply the law in their day to day. And I thought that was really progressive. It was different. No one else was doing it, and their students were passing the test, obviously, because they were actually seeing it from the beginning. And so I take that same kind of principle. If you did that with informatics, you, you introduce these principles, you show them CPOE, you show them bed, um, barcode charting, and then when they go out through these rotations, they start seeing it, and they start identifying it. It just makes it more relatable by the time they get into that point of what do they want to do. So. No, there's different approaches, there's different philosophies of what is right, what is wrong. I can't tell you what is right, what is wrong, but I mean, I thought that was just really a nice approach to handling that situation. Yeah, and, and to add in a uh, thought that I had actually yesterday, which I kept thinking about, because there's a lot of pharmacy students, since I started these kind of videos, I've been getting a lot of questions about pharmacy students that were actually in either an engineering um, background or they were, were originally interested in engineering and they wish they had known about this way early back in like high school huh. areas like that you can do something in healthcare and in like some type of technology in technical field like computer engineering um, and it made me think like because of the shortage of people in our field mm -hmm. and even for myself I feel as though I'm lacking a lot of technical skills I almost wonder if pharmacy informatics should be introduced as a potential career path all the way down, trickling down to high school age. Like, this is a great field. And the, the reason why I say that and why I think we should bring it all the way down way early is because we want to groom them. So you groom the, the, the students, so students who are interested in tech early on, right? And you groom them, develop the technical skills, and then they go to pharmacy school to them, and they groom their clinical skills. So we have someone that's trained formally in both places um, and I think that makes that would help us in the pharmacy profession meet our needs of a very well-rounded well-trained almost like an ideal kind of right. pharmacy informatics candidate. I mean I think you hit it right on I mean even myself I'll tell you my first love was computer science my first love was computer engineering games oh all <laughs> yeah. the time <laughs> all the time there you go. There you go. emulators oh yeah Got but you know, one one of the fears that I had, especially during the time when I was going into college, is my job, security, would it be outsourced? And so those are those real questions that really kept me from going into directly into computers. And so when I found out about informatics, it was just like, man, I'm back to my original love, you know. So going to your point, I think that'd be perfect. You introduce it really early and people can understand like, hey, I can be able to do both of your those love. They have a passion for technology or they have a passion for health, you can come to a really a nice conduit and be able to do both. Uh, so I think that was some good discussion that we had. Um, this was more of a, you know, just did a video just yeah, to talk about pretty it. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, kind of on the fly. But I think this is gonna be nice because hopefully at least my goal, I think it's going to be your goal as well, is that hopefully it'll generate questions from our audience and then maybe they can ask more questions and uh, we can elaborate and right, comment right. on that. Yeah, so again, it's a comic field, so it's right here. There you go, right so down there. So feel free to ask, ask all your questions and we'll be, hopefully be able to answer and maybe make another video. Okay, so big thanks to Sam for being out here. I'm going to definitely leave his contact below. 
Um, until next time, guys.